All right, Zach. Uh, so, you know, I am a, a beloved by many snake handler, uh, <laughs> oh. relocator. Oh, I know. I know. HOA president and all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, not th- not yesterday, okay. but two weeks ago, we had home groups at our house. And Jordy was in our backyard. Oh, no. And uh, he had kicked the ball into the woods. Mm. And Jordy starts running after the ball. And Phoebe starts saying, Jordy, <laughs> no! Don't go into the woods. It's snake oh. season. <laughs> oh, snake season's afoot. She knows. Yeah, she knows. So we were dying laughing when we, we heard about it. She, she was looking out for Jordy. I like it. They, they seem to be fast, fast friends, you yeah, know, yeah. looking out. She, he he yeah. always loves playing with Phoebe. So Phoebe, yeah. looking out for him. I yeah, like it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, speaking of snakes, I don't know how. <laughs> you know, we always have the, the little banter and then we're trying to connect it. Uh. But uh, yeah, so we have talked about um you know, the will of God. Okay. The serpent asked about what the will of God yeah, was. So maybe that's true. the link to That is the link that. that all serpents are Satan. <laughs> no, is that what you're saying? No, no okay. No. Sorry. No. Um, but so we did talk, we kind of answered, we took a couple parts to answer uh, Cordell's question. And then we kind of talked about decision making and the will of God. And really, what does that, how does that fit in? Um but we thought, or at least I thought, and you uh, acquiesced to maybe do one more podcast where we just kind of talk about the will of God yeah. itself. Because I think there can be misunderstanding because you read some passages. And so I yeah. thought, you know, we should at least treat this as its own topic and take it to the next level. From the heart of the low country in South Carolina, it's the Take Two Podcast, where we take theology to the next level. Okay, so how many wills does God have? (laughs) One uh, will. One will, maybe. (laughs) Maybe. Uh, Some people would say two. Some people would say three, but then would you know, and we can maybe talk about this, but Kevin DeYoung would give you a third one, but then take Take it back back, uh, away from Uh, you. Gotcha. Um, so I will propose that okay. there are two ways to understand the will of God. And so we can... And, and a lot of people, when they talk about the will of God, they're not talking about either of these two ways. No, That's yeah. the confusion, yeah, right? Yeah, So that's the third one that Kevin Young would give you. So <laughs> let, let me, we can name them. So at least okay. yeah. you can decide to disagree later if you want to. I mean, but if you want to disagree, you can. Um, so we're going to talk about the will of decree. Okay. Um, some people might call this the will, uh, the sovereign will, mm. um, and versus the will of desire or okay. God's moral will. And then the one that you're talking about, Kevin Young calls the will of direction, like God, what should I do? You know, there's this secret will that it's our job to kind of figure out mm. and then go obey it. Like, does God want me to take this job in Atlanta? Yes or no. I need to figure that out. Okay, now I need to go take that will. He would say, Kevin Young would at least give it a name, the will of direction, but then well, say that yeah. it's not really biblically supported that that's something that we're supposed to go find out. Um, so, and there's this guy, I don't know if you've heard of him, John Piper. Have you Ooh, heard of this guy? <laughs> ringing a bell. I think so. Yeah, so he has this big, long uh, chapter in a book that I saw at least reproduced online on um, his platform. I forgot Desiring it. God. Desiring just, God. Just a little yeah, aside, God. you can get any John Piper book for free on Desiring God in PDF form. If you ever there want you it, go. they're all there, his whole library. There Carry you go. On. Yeah, so this was not in PDF form, but it was basically because this question, it plays in a lot of different doctrines, mm-hmm. you know, because how you fall out on this will, will could determine some of your soteriology. So he's specifically addressing some soteriology questions in this article really about, you know, what uh, does God want everyone to be saved or not? And that limited atonement type of question or mm. purposeful atonement depend on how you phrase it. So that's where this uh, paragraph comes from. But Um, he's dealing kind of with the same question. So he says, this distinction in the way God wills has been expressed in various ways throughout the centuries. 
is not a new contrivance. For example, theologians have spoken of sovereign will and moral will, efficient will and permissive will, secret will and revealed will, will of decree and will of command, uh, decretive will and per perceptive will, um, and then volanatus signi, will of sign, versus volanatus beneplacity, the will of good pleasure. So wow. I just I thought that was a good paragraph yeah. because it, we're not the first people to kind of read this and go, wow, it seems like there's more than one way that God wills things to happen. And um, my boy, oh, Coco, Coco would say when he's talking about the Trinity, it is it is a solution, mm. not a problem. So the Trinity, when we read all these verses and we yeah. just got done talking about the angel of the Lord, um, when we look at all the verses that talk about the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit, the Bible never says Trinity, but yeah. if you don't kind of recognize those three different persons, you yeah. got a problem. So the Trinity <laughs> yeah. kind of solves that problem. And so in the same way, I would say having these two categories for the wills of God solves the problem Otherwise, you just have contradictions. Yeah, I, I like that too on many levels. If you're running into a problem in Scripture, it's great to take out your Bible and try to problem solve it. Not saying you're wrong doing that. But there's a lot of people over the centuries who have probably had this same conversation. Yeah. There's nothing new under <laughs> yeah. the sun. Yeah. Even if you don't agree with everyone, mm -hmm. it gives you a framework and gives you a starting point where you don't got to figure out the world. There's a lot yeah. out there. Yeah, 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 that's good. So I thought we could read through some <laughs> verses that kind of describe this will of desire. Now, if we were listening to an R RC Sproul has something probably on YouTube, I think mm. that you could go listen to probably better spoken than me, um, where he would say that the will of desire is a will of God that you can thwart, mm. but not without impunity. So yeah. you can thwart God's will of desire, but there are consequences to thwarting it. And then he would contrast that with the will of decree that you cannot thwart God's will of, of decree. Wow. So this would be his God's moral law. So uh, kind of the huge places we see this, 1 Thessalonians 4, 3 through 5, for this is the will of God, your sanctification, that is that you abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not lustful passions like the Gentiles who do not know God. All right, so that's an, that's kind of the, the big one. Another one, first, another one in First Thessalonians five eighteen, and everything give thanks for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. First Peter two fifteen, for such is the will of God that by doing right you may silence the ignorance of foolish men. Uh, Matthew six ten, very familiar. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth mm. as it is in heaven. So yeah. here we get this idea that God's will is done absolutely right in heaven, but not always on earth. And so we should maybe pray for it to be done on earth. So those are some verses that kind of highlight God's moral desire for us. W he would you put this in the same category to like the verses that say that God desires all men to be saved? Wow. So that's, oh, did I, that's did I, no, uh, no, 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 that's good. So I would put that, I, I put that in the big three. So, oh, okay. Gotcha, so gotcha, 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 so yeah, those yeah. are kind of your general ones. And then these are the big three uh, for soteriology. I, I should have just looked forward in the notes. I was like, <laughs> no, I was like flipping to my Bible. No, you're, it's a good, it's a good segue. So, you know, at least we're thinking on the same, <laughs> the same wavelength. Um, so second uh, Peter three, nine, says the Lord is not slow about his promise as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all mm -hmm. to come to repentance. Yeah, I wish God could get his wishes. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So that that's the question. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Piper would say about this one and the next one. Let me read the next one. Okay. So these are kind of the big, you know, we're sovereign grace guys. So it's fine if you're not. I know you, you, and you have a response to this. So these are the kind of the verses that we would kind of wrestle over how to understand them. Um, first Timothy two, three through four, this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our savior who desires all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. 
So there are ways that I think that are right to understand these that would limit God's desire. So the first one, if you look at the book of Second Peter, I would say it's clearly written to believers. Second Peter calls it brothers. Mm -hmm. And then even at the beginning of this paragraph, he's talking to the elect. And so I would say that this is limited to yeah. God's desire here. There's a limiting function that limits it to the elect. But, and Piper's like, if an Arminian or someone, you know, I, I hate using, I can say I'm a Calvinist because I'm five. Right. Uh, I, I, I hold all of them. You know, there are, there's a difference between a, you know, a five yeah. point Arminian and a three point Arminian. Yeah. You know, yeah. So there's, there's a lot of range in that spectrum. So, I, you know, I, you can be anywhere because I, I think of the kind of the folks that I grew up with mm. who might be listening to this because they I don't think they're full on yeah. five point Calvinist I mean five point Arminian but anyways you might say you know Michael you're arbitrarily limiting that and that's fine but even then this would you would put this I think then into this will of desire because clearly yeah not everyone is being saved um, yeah something's not. Yeah. Lining up if you're thinking about it that way, that that's good. Yeah. Um, so then uh, the other one, First Timothy two three through four. If you read kind of the verses before that, then you have you know uh, Paul telling Timothy, you should pray for every types of people. Mm. And so this is kind of the move that Calvinists will make that would say that God is desiring that all kinds, even though kinds isn't in there, yeah. that the reference to kings and high places and stuff that we would limit this to, we would say that this isn't saying that he desires every individual person mm. to be saved. Um, but that, you know, all types of people, whether every, they are the lowly, the high yeah. all over. Um, again, if you don't accept that, you know, the same thing, then this will has, has to, because if you try to put this into sovereign will, yeah, clearly not, a, not every individual person is and, being saved. And if you're an Arminian or whatever, you're not going to concede to universalism or I mean, you can run with it the whole other way. Right. If it's like all means all, then you mean that everyone's getting saved. It's right. like, yeah, you got to like have some distinction, right? You got to, you got to <clears throat> somehow <clears throat> count that out. Now, Ezekiel 18, <clears throat> 23, um, and 32. These are ones that are kind of harder to limit from a, a Calvinist. So I think that you have to interpret it in light of the two different wills. Um, it says, do I have any pleasure in the death of the wicked, declares the Lord God, rather that he should turn away from his ways and live? And then skip down to 32, for I have no pleasure in the death of anyone who dies, declares the Lord God, therefore repent and live. So then, again, people are, if you put this into God's sovereign will, like we're going to read some verses that say he gets everything mm. that he wants, then clearly you have a contradiction. So this verse you would have to say somehow this is God's will of desire, his moral will. Morally, he doesn't want people to live evil lives and perish because of that. But clearly that's not happening. Mm. Yeah. So those are kind of be the big three yeah. that you might use even in a soteriological discussion to talk about the God God's will. Yeah. Soteriology affects more than just salvation, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah that's good. Yeah. That's good. All right. So those are kind of the big verses that you would put that I would put potentially in the will of desire. Those ones from Peter, especially, and probably Timothy. I don't know that it's hmm. talking about a will of desire because you, as a Calvinist, I might say, yeah, those are will yeah, right, will yeah. of decree, and he gets all of his elect. Oh yeah, period. Right. You know, yeah, so yeah, you yeah, you yeah. know, it depends on how you understand those. Um, but these are clearly will of decree. Uh, you know, we go to this one a hmm. lot. Um, I will, you know, so much so that I've heard one person say, yeah, yeah, you got your Isaiah 46 <laughs> passage. And I'm like, but it's not mine. It's God's, it's, you know, yeah, it's, yeah, it's here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, let's read it. Cause I love it so much. Remember this and be assured, recall it to mind. You transgressors. Remember the former things long past for I'm God. There is no other. I'm God. There's no one like me declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient times, things which have not been done saying my purpose will be established. I'll accomplish all my good pleasure. 
calling a bird of prey from the east, the man of my purpose from a far country. Truly I have spoken. Truly I will bring it to pass. I have planned it. Surely I will do it. That That's definitive. It's very definitive. Like, And I'm trying to think of like, how could you get around it? Like maybe if <laughs> right. I, it's not, I don't think it's poetry, but maybe you could say, oh, those are just poetic. That's not what he really means. Or maybe it's some type of figure of speech. I don't think any of that's going on here. I don't think you, it's so broad in its application yeah. i don't think you yeah. can say well this is just for this people at this p- period of time so i i mm. think those are fairly strong yeah uh doesn't get much stronger than that <laughs> no um ephesians 1 10 through 11 with a view to an administration suitable to the fullness of the times that is a summing up of all things in christ things in the heavens and things on earth really that's just there because of how averse the vision is so really we really mm. want these last words in him also we have an obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to his purpose, who works all things after the counsel of his will. So I know some, maybe Brian, if you're listening, might say that God is only cho- God the Father yeah. is choosing Christ. Oh, and yeah, and not you. choosing yeah. the individuals, and just happens to be the individuals who show up in Christ get chosen by virtue of being in Christ. Ah. So he's predestined Christ and not the individuals. But this is the only passage where this in him kind of goes along with this choosing. Because if you scroll in your Bible over to Romans 28 and 30. <laughs> says, and we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose, for those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his son, so that he would be the firstborn among many brethren, and these whom he predestined, he also called, and those whom he called, he also justified, and those whom he justified, he also glorified. Mm. So, yeah, we can d- discuss how one gets elect, but God is sovereignly... Those seem to be sovereignly moving right. through that process. Yeah, those are, oh man, what great verses. They get, just give you so much confidence that, man, yeah. these things are set. Yeah, and you could turn over Romans 9, mm. and he would say, I have made cool. vessels for glory, for mercy, and vessels mm. uh, for dishonor to show my yeah. wrath. So, um, again, he seems to be sovereign in those decisions. Uh, Proverbs sixteen four: The Lord has made everything for its own purpose, even the wicked Ooh. for the day of evil. Yeah, that's a so hard that one. That seems to yeah. be in contradiction to the Ezekiel passages that say, you know, uh, and and really those are talking about His pleasure. And then I copied over some work that nice. you had done out of the London Baptist Confession from our previous Boom. one, and we won't read all of these, but just as a reminder, because we kind of touched on this, yeah, right. a little bit before when we were talking about sovereignty. Because uh, sovereignty and will of God kind of go hand in hand, but you know they're they're separate but mm. different. But um, we said he was sovereign over um, the uh, all all the Hebrews, uh, or I mean uh, to uphold the universe. Sorry, he's sovereign over all. He is sovereign <laughs> over all the Hebrews too. <laughs> Every people group though. Sovereign over all <laughs> Hebrews one three because he upholds the universe. Colossians one seventeen and then all things hold together. In Job, we see that he's sovereign over the weather, uh, whether it's the snow or the, the rain. Matthew 6, 26. Matthew 10, 29. He's sovereign over the birds of the mm. air and all the animals. Um, Proverbs 6, 16. He's uh, sovereign over chance or luck. Psalm 22. Daniel 4. Wow. Ezra yeah. 1. He's sovereign over the nations. He even you know names Cyrus before he's on the scene. He's sovereign over our whole lives. Acts 17, Psalm 139, Jeremiah uh, 1, 5. You know, I knew all the days uh, of, the, of, bo- of the book of your life before wow. they were, you were born. Um, so all of these passages that kind of talk about his sovereignty, you know, you can only really be sovereign if you have a will. Right. Without the will, the sovereignty becomes a little bit less, uh, it just, yeah. Yeah. So those passages kind of talk about God getting what he wants, but yeah. kind of implied that there, there is a want there. Yeah. And you know, you're just pulling 10 verses passages here. You could look anywhere. And I, th- I think most Christians no. would concede that God is sovereign. Maybe, right. you know, they're quibbling right. about the, the extent, but man, I just see verse after verse after verse. It's right. hard to grapple, yeah. grapple with that. So we have all those passages that I read 
at the first kind of in one category where God desires us to be, you know, sanctified, moral, stay away from sexual immorality. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's others that we could pull that talk about, you know, God wants us to do this and this. And, and clearly we don't always obey that. Yeah. And then another column, we have all these verses that say, basically God gets exactly what he wants. He's sovereign over everything. God wills what he wants. And so, we have options on how to deal with this. And the first one is we could just say, oh, the Bible's full of contradictions. Oh, yeah. Don't like, I don't like that option, Michael. <laughs> no. So I, I don't think, you know, if you're a believer, I yeah. don't think that's an option that's open to you. Mm. Unless you thought, well, this, maybe you're like, well, it's mistranslated, but that's not also not a good also option. Not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, right, um, right, right. Uh, and I think that there's ways we could show it's not mistranslated. Yes. So then you're back to contradiction. Um, Another way, and I was thinking, I put this down thinking like no one would take this way, but I thought, well, maybe they, they would, is, you know, sometimes we, there's two verses or maybe a set of verses mm. that some would speak kind of one way and others would speak another way. Yeah. And we just take all of the other set to be figures of speech or something. So, yeah. you know, an apostle option would be to say, um, well, let me give you an example of Please this. Do. Um, so does God have wings? <laughs> no. No. Is he a fortress? In a way. In a but way. No, but I, I'm not. Is yeah, he yeah, a, not, a literal shield? Yeah, he's not a literal shield. There is a Bible out there that you can buy that has commentator common, common comments in it by a go. commentator. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That would say that God literally has... You know all of these things because he's like you, I just take the Bible man, literally. That that I feel like that's been so co opted where it's like man that I think I know what people are meaning, but when you run with take everything at literally, right. you're you're gonna have a bad time. Right. Yeah. And so what we would say is these are figures of speech. The whole set of these yeah. verses are figures of speech to kind of help us understand the nature of who God is, how He acts, what He does, but He's not literally wings. Yeah. He right. and and to the point of Jesus doesn't literally sit at the right hand of the Father. That you know it should affect right, yeah. some of of those things too, because the Father is spirit. He doesn't have a body. He doesn't have extension. That's right. Yeah. So I was thinking, what would it look like if we took our two categories of God's will and tried to maybe do that? Ooh. And I think maybe like you're hyper Calvinists, or mm-hmm. you're maybe on on the side of determinism might take these verses about God's sovereign will and push them that far and, and say that all the other verses are really kind of not talking about God. There may be more of a figure speech. I don't know. Yeah. That's really interesting. Can you imagine going to seek counsel from an elder who's a hyper Calvinist and like, what should I do for the will of God? And they're like, Whatever happens, happens. It's like it's it's <laughs> yeah. our it's like you yeah. have no good control. That's not comforting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember this guy's <laughs> name from. So this is so it was Harold Camping. Oh, from the. Do you remember prophecy. that prophecy? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was he was kind of like this. Like people okay. would call into his radio. So sorry if you if you didn't listen to last Thursday's episode, which for us was only like twenty or thirty minutes ago. <laughs> right. I mentioned this guy that I couldn't remember his name, but oh. now you know my old old mind finally brought it up, but. People would call him and say, and they were kind of testing him. I don't think anyone was oh, really, yeah. but they're yeah. like, can you give me the plan of salvation? How am I saved? And he's like, I, I can't tell you how to be saved. That's, that, <laughs> wow, is, that, that is, is God's sovereign activity. Either oh, you man. are going to be saved or you're not going to be saved. So I think he might fall Fun, into this yeah. category where you would really take these will of decree as being the actual way God is and the will of desire to kind of be more, you know, this figurative Man. language like God as a shield or stuff. And I thought you could have the flip of that maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, maybe a hyper Arminian. Maybe uh, flowers. What's Ooh, this? Leighton. What's Leighton? Yeah, Leighton flowers. Mm. Might be. I don't know. Uh, he's... He seems to be very, almost the point of being an open theist, which might be another yeah. person, another mm. group of people who might take these will of desires, mm. interpret them as being more yeah, right. of the solid thing versus 
the will of decree mm-hmm. being, you know, and then take the will of decree as figurative. Yeah, isn't that? Yeah, that, that that's, a, that's a good thought exercise because you have to, you know, harmonize these in some some yeah. way, right? Yeah. So I think options are leave it as a contradiction. And <laughs> yeah, not a yeah, yeah. Push one set of verses over another. I don't, I don't think that that's how the Bible presents these. I don't yeah. think that's an option. So if that's not the case, then it's got to be something like the Trinity where we kind of find right. a solution yeah. to understand these. And so like Piper said, for years and years, centuries, theologians have kind of categorized mm. these two different ways God yeah. wills things to happen. Um, and so they would say this will of, I, I, I will of decree and will of desire. Um, but some people might say sovereign will or more will, but however you, you couch it. So, you know, I, I like that a lot because either way you go, it's, you know, if someone's only interpreting through one will, that is hopeless. Whatever happens, happens. You got no choice. Then on the other side, if you went to someone, you know, what's God's will for my life? And they were basically like, um, abstain from sexual morality, immorality. And it's like, yeah, but I, 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 need, I need more than that. <laughs> right. Or, you know, how yeah, do yeah. I, yeah. you know, you've got to balance, balance everything out that that's good. Yeah. So kind of the point of this, um, maybe like, you know, so what? Well, I think. It's important to understand this because when you read scripture and you want to understand the full counsel of God, you want to make sure that you're mm-hmm. rightly interpreting scripture. This is a place where you might get, you know, kind of in over your head if you're if you don't kind of have a yeah. category for this or to understand how these things might work together. So I think it helps you uh, yeah. kind of gives you just a category of, of how to think about it. And then I also had down here, um, it could give you peace or confidence kind of that, you know, in, in this decre- decreed will, decretative mm-hmm. will, as you might say, that um, he is providentially shaping our outcome. And we talked about this, the Trusting God book by Bridges. Oh, yeah. um, but basically, you know, his love, his power, his knowledge, and his unchangeable nature uh, give us something to that we can trust, but you know if he can't really guarantee some of these things. Like, man, I didn't know this was going to happen. Yeah, but I'm here to help you through it. You know, that's that wouldn't yeah. be a God that you necessarily would want. To, but if you're like, well, yeah, this terrible thing happened. I allowed that to happen, and really, it's mm, the best. A and, and even yeah. though it hurts, and even though this was ugly. The, you know, there's going to be yeah. good that comes out of it. You may not even understand all the good right now because it's going to have ripple effects maybe through generations of how, right. how, yeah. it, how it might work out. But I'm in control and, and you can trust me. And basically you need to work as hard as you can to be like my son. And through that, you'll be, you'll be sanctified and, and yeah, ultimately that. glorified. And, that, and that's a pattern. You look back through scripture and you see it played out in – all sorts of different ways, whether someone's, you know, super successful or they're struggling or whatever it is. It's like, man, and I'm sure most people, I think most people, they look back at their life, they can see something, something like that. So I think ultimately, like you're saying, it is such, such a comfort. And at the same time, gives us a framework to try to, you know, put these different yeah. verses and think about them together. Yeah. All right. Well, any other thoughts? No other thoughts. If we have not, maybe not exhausted everything on, on Will, yeah. but this is a nice little four episode mini series, yeah, yeah, maybe that yeah. kind of, not mini series, a real series, right? Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. All right. Well, that's our take. Thanks for listening to Take Two. Find us wherever you find podcasts and on YouTube for those who want to watch our video cast. <laughs>